What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to color grade or color correct your videos with Wondershare Filmora. I know I haven't done a Filmora uh, video tutorial in a very long time. This video is sponsored by iSkySofts.com. Whether you guys want to convert your videos for personal use, of course, if you have uh, files that you want to uh, change into PDF, you have that option as well. It's a really cool PDF application. You also have the option, uh, this one here, which is the Filmora video editing application. And you also have the data recovery if you guys uh, need to recover files from your deleted iPhone. You can recover your own files in case you have accidentally deleted them. So a link to the uh, iSkySoft.com website is going to be linked down in the description. So be sure to check it out. Uh, but anyways, let's get started with the video. So once you guys download Filmora, Filmora is for free, but you guys can, of course, pay to get the full features of it. Link is in the description. Uh, so when you first open up Filmora, it's going to allow you to uh, set up your project in a specific aspect ratio. Once you guys open up Filmora, you're going to have a message center with new updates and new packs that you guys can download. I kind of already made an in-depth tutorial and overview of Filmora already. The link is going to be in the description just to kind of give you a refresher. Over here is the media tab where you guys can import your videos and, and pictures and music and stuff like that. Over here is the music tab to uh, add music, which is nice. Over here we have the text and credits tab. Over here we have the transitions, and these transitions honestly are my favorite transitions to use. So huge, huge thanks to Filmora for adding these warp transitions because I know a lot of people are going to be using them. So the next one here is the filters tab, which allows you to pretty much add filters and cool stuff to your video, kind of like a kind of like the LUTs that I'm going to show you in this video. So the next one we have is overlays. Uh, these are really cool. We have overlays. Let me give you a little preview. These are just like little bokeh uh, light leaks effect that you guys can add to your videos to kind of spice it up. Uh, and over here we have the elements tab, which is more of like effects and text stuff like that that you guys can add on top of your video, which is really, really cool. So, and then the next one we have is, is a split screen. There's two different ways of adding the, the video. You can easily just click and drag to add it to the first video uh, timeline part here, or you can just click the plus icon and this will add the whole entire video. So hold down uh, Shift Z to fit everything into the timeline. And if I go back, um, you're going to see that I can skim through it. Now keep in mind that it's not going to play back 100%. It's kind of like Premiere where you can change the playback, I guess, render settings. So you have like quarter, half, full, and so on. But if I push play, you're going to see that it lags a little bit. Also keep in mind that this is 4K video, so it's going to be even worse. But it still plays back just fine. So right now we want to fix up the colors. So there's many different ways of going into this. If you click on the button, it's going to bring up a the main uh, part where you can actually change all of the colors. But you can also uh, double click on this, and then you can click on right here. You, can have, you have the 3D LUT option. But if you click on Advanced and you wait for it to load, it will also take you to the Advanced Color Tuning uh, window, which is nice. Or you can right click and click on show inspector and it will pretty much allow you to also get there as well by clicking on advanced. So I just click on this button because it's the fastest. The video here is missing a lot of detail, I guess, mainly in the color. So the ocean here is not as blue as I want it. And the, and the sand here is very pale, very kind of washed out in my opinion. So I kind of want to bring those colors more more alive, make it more vivid. So over here, if we go to the presets, you have, if you click on all presets, this will show you all the presets that are built in into Filmora. You can also have the option of favorite and custom. You have 3D LUT, common, film, and vignette. I'm going to go to 3D LUT. All of these are the 3D LUTs that comes with the uh, Filmora application. If you go to adjust and you go to 3D LUT, and you click on none, these are also the same ones except these bottom ones here, which I got the LUTs from Cameron Brown. And I honestly only use his LUTs because they're the best LUTs in my opinion. If you guys want to download it, I will leave a link down in the description. Be sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel and leave a like on his video. First, I'm going to show you these. So these are the 3D LUTs that you guys can apply. So these are more like Instagram kind of filter uh, filters, if that makes sense. So we have like Batman, we have black and white film, Game of Thrones. Some of these are inspired by by those actual films. So we have Harry Potter, more bluish, really sad. I don't think this would fit the theme here or the, the scene, I guess, but you have a whole bunch here. Now, these are the ones that I have um, installed, I guess, to actually load them into uh, Filmora. 
you're going to go to 3D LUT or you can go to adjust clicking on this one and click on load new LUT. And I'm going to select this folder here, which is the main pack that you guys would download. And you would select all of these and click on open. I'm not going to do that because I already did that. And if you click on none and you select the ones like this one here, M31 through M31709 uh, or M31 log, these are the ones that I've loaded into Filmora. So if I select them, you're going to see that they're very similar to the ones that Filmora provides for you. 8700 standard, yet this one is still too blue. But you can skim through the video here and I would suggest not doing something like this because this looks overly saturated and there's just too much contrast going on. So what, uh, when, I'm, when I'm selecting LUTs, I'm trying to make it look as subtle as possible. So like if we were to go through each one of these, some of these will look nice depending on, on a certain one. Like this one looks really nice, the LUT Dusk 1, but it's still a little bit kind of blown uh, in the highlights, but it's not overly, the highlights aren't too washed out if that makes sense so if you go through you can see the difference here so you can go through all of these this one's this one looks nice but uh for the for the time being i'm going to select this one and i'm going to further enhance this so if you have this button here you can uncheck that if you want but we're going to go into color okay and we can adjust this further the exposure will allow you to control the overall brightness of that video so it not only affects the the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows, it does it all. So just keep that in mind. So I would not really mess with the exposure unless it's, you know, unless you need to. So I'm going, I'm not going to touch that very much. The brightness is a little bit different. The brightness just kind of affects the highlights a little bit more. And you can see that in the histogram. The histogram allows you to see the highlights, midtones, and shadows. So if I were to increase this all the way, the right side of the histogram is the brighter colors, okay? So like the whites. If I were to drag all this all the way to the left, it's gonna move it all the way to the left or towards the middle where it thinks it's the darkest. So if I were to make this all the way over here and the exposure all the way over here, you can see that this is all the way black, which we really don't want. And we can reset this, by the way, by clicking this little arrow, okay? So we're gonna increase the contrast to around 20. Now we have the vibrance over here, and a lot of people, a lot of people get confused between the vibrance and the saturation, or vibrancy between saturation. So vibrance is more, I would say, it, it it affects the muted colors, and it doesn't affect the skin tones as much, but it, it affects the 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 muted colors, and leaves the ones that are that are saturated well, the colors that are just working fine, it leaves those alone. So if we were to like move the vibrance all the way out to the left you can see that these colors are working just fine with the overall image so if we were to increase all the, this all the way to the right it's only affecting a little bit as you can see the sand only affects a little bit over here we're seeing a little like a lot more blue than on the right side of this so if we were to increase this it's affecting most of the left side if you can see i'm going to increase this to around 10 and the saturation if we move this to the left, this will allow us to give us, of course, that black and white look. And this will get rid of all of the colors except the grays here. So if we were to increase this, you're going to see where we have all of our colors back in there. If we increase this all the way over here, you're going to see that it's overly saturated and it just destroys the image. So we're going to increase this just a little bit. But we don't want to increase it too much because you can see even here it's completely blown. So we're going to increase it to around 5 and we're good there. So we're going to go into light. Now we have highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So highlights are these parts here, the, the brightest parts of the image. Highlights are more of the, it only controls the uh, white part of the image here. We're gonna leave this one just how it is because I think that's just fine how it is. The shadows, of course, controls the shadows. So everything like this right here in the sand. We increase this, this will kind of give us that more kind of a, washed out effect if we decrease this to the left it will kind of bring back some a little bit of the detail so i'm going to decrease this to around 10 negative 10. the whites are everything that is white i guess in the image so if we decrease this to the left it will also adjust that if we increase this this will make it a little bit right here we're losing detail in the highlights and the whites so we're going to decrease that to around negative two and the blacks here uh, the blacks control the darkest areas, of course, only the black parts of the image. So if we decrease this all the way to the left, we're losing detail in the shadows here. So we're going to actually increase this a little bit to around 5 as well. Uh, HSL is 
the hue, saturation, and luminance. We're gonna change, since there's more blue in the image, we're gonna go to the blues, and we're gonna change the hue. So we're changing the tone of the image. So we can make this a little bit more green, that teal, tealish uh, color, we can do that. Or we can make it more blue, like more, more ocean-like. However, I'm gonna move this to the left a little bit to make it a little bit more of that teal look. The saturation, we can adjust only in the, in this hue, in this color specifically, that's the only color that's adjusting it, as you can see. So we're adjusting the saturation in, in the blues here. So I can make it less saturated or more saturated. So I'm gonna increase this to like maybe four. And the luminance is pretty much the brightness of that color. So um, I'm going to slightly increase it to around five. And then we have vignette, which I don't like to use, but it kind of creates a a kind of a border around it. We have the amount, we can decrease this to the left to increase that all around or do it the opposite to create a, a white one. Makes it look a little bit romantic, but I'm just gonna leave that how it is. But you can adjust this, so if I were to do like negative 42, you can change the size here, you can change how round it is. You can change the feather, which is how smooth or hard, harsh the edges are. So I'm gonna do something like that, increase the feather. I can increase this, the exposure in that. I don't do that though. And the highlights as well. You can also save this as a preset. So you can give this a name. You can name this like teal uh, teal and blue. So you don't have to reapply that, um, all of the adjustments. You can just click on it and you're done. So now if I click on okay, you're gonna see that it immediately applies that color as well as the LUT because we also added the LUT to the video. So now if I were to make, uh, push play, it's gonna it's gonna play here, and you can also click this play button to um, render it out so it plays back a little bit more smooth. And when you're ready to export, just click export and give it a name here and save it as you wish. So that is my personal settings when it comes to adjusting the colors. And I try to explain it as simple as possible for those who are not really familiar with uh, color grading as well as adding a LUT to it. I hope you guys found this Filmora video helpful. Be sure to check out iSkysoft.com as well. Link is in the description. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.